as Fat Patrick said, that this is a really, really important issue, and we all have had cried a tear and and listened to so many of, our, of the survivors in this country and the adoptees of those survivors who lived in the mother and baby homes. Um, and there's a few things I want to, to carry on from what Fitz, Senator Fitzpatrick was saying. Um, and it was about whether Tusla has the resources. We've seen the media over the past couple of days about Tusla you know, um, saying that they, they fear that they don't have the sufficient staff to deal with the complex work that, which has emerged from the, even the initial assessment of the database. And I suppose, Minister, we need, we need to make sure that you know, we have this database now that we have protected. We have um, the report coming out that is going to raise up so much hurt, so much fear, so much anxiety amongst all the survivors and I really hope that we can have a, a for the want of a better word, a holistic approach to this, um, that we look after these women, we look after the adoptees, that we look to the mental health supports, so that they are prioritised for mental health supports, that women who do not want to be found can be protected, that their privacy is also protected. Because I know and I've spoken to women who fear that their past is going to be brought back right in front of them and they don't want it, they've left it behind them. So there's a balancing of rights and we spoke about that at a committee as well, Minister. Um, and I also want to make sure that we have no ambiguity as to what is the process, as to what is going, what is going to happen to the database, how, is, how, are these people, how are these survivors and abductees going to find out about their past. Um, and you know the timelines proposed and the formalities uh, um, requesting information and just to make sure that these women and adoptees are looked after because it's going to be very hard on, on all parties um, and they need minding, they need to be looked after and they need um, care and consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Minister. <coughs> Thank you very much, Cahirlach, uh, and I'd like to thank both senators for um, <coughs> giving me the opportunity to speak here today and, and provide this, uh, this, this update on, on some of these matters. As you know, I received the report of the Commission in, of Investigation into Mother and Baby Homes on the 30th of October, and this report, as you mentioned, Senator Fitzpatrick, has been years in the making, and survivors uh, intently want to see it published soon, and I share that wish. Um, and I think it's important that this report is published so that all of us can collectively better understand the experiences of the women who are in mother and baby homes and the experiences of the children who are born there. Once the government has given uh, approval for publication, I will engage directly with former residents as key, holder, as key stakeholders who are central to these issues to provide them with the details on the report and the pro proposed next steps in the first instance. And I'm acutely conscious of the anticipation experienced by former residents and their families awaiting publication of this report. And I want to reassure senators that there will be no undue delay in bringing the report forward for publication. I've already been in direct contact with a considerable number of former residents by telephone and in line with commitments already in place in this regard, my, con my department will make contact with, with directly with former residents through existing communication channels to inform them of these matters before they are brought into the public domain. There's a dedicated telephone information line within my department already available and these details are available on the department's website for people seeking further information on related matters. Once the publication is announced, these details will be widely advertised on various platforms to inform key stakeholders again of the decisions. There is also a telephone line already available for people seeking details of counselling supports available to those affected by these issues. All of these numbers have been provided previously to former residents and their supporters and will be publicised on my department's website and on the HSE website. My officials have liaised with the National Counselling Service to ensure that capacity is primed to respond to any increased demand for the services which may arise on foot of the publication of the report, both during offers hours and in respect of an out of hours service as well. I want to be as clear as possible on the matter of records. The archive of the Commission of Investigation is still in the Commission's possession. The Government's intention is to publish the Commission's report as soon as possible, and as such, the archive will not be transferred to my department prior to the publication of the report. 
This means that I will not be able to provide copies of personal data to survivors in advance of receiving the archive. The archive will be transferred to my department by the 28th of February next. That's provided for in the legislation. Thereafter, my department will be able to process subject access requests from people who want access to their records. And my department is working intensively to ensure that there are proper, uh, properly resourced, it is properly resourced to handle subject access requests and can provide people with as much uh, personal data as possible. Possible. I can't make an absolute commitment that the department will be able to provide unredacted records in all cases. The right to personal data, as we discussed during, during the debates under Article 15 of the GDPR, is not absolute. Release of personal data must not adversely affect the rights and freedoms of others, and this test must always be applied when considering whether to release personal information. And it's a legal requirement to apply this test in each case, and in some circumstances, it's likely that this may mean that certain records may be redacted or partially redacted. In all my engagement uh, on the Commission's records, I've always made it clear that applying GDPR will not resolve all the issues around access to information, and this underlines the importance of enacting robust information and tracing legislation. I have given a commitment in this regard that will bring forward fresh, fresh proposals on information and tracing next year. And the intention is that this legislation will support individuals to access more information than is currently accessible to them under GDPR or FOI. I'm committed to this legislation to ensure that we can provide people with the identity information they need with the necessary wraparound supports for all, all involved. As it happens after this, I'm meeting with my officials about this specific piece of legislation later today, and I look forward to working with all members of this House in advancing this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. A very quick, um, thank you very much, Minister. And it is very reassuring that there will be adequate supports and, and you have you know, um, ensured that the, the council services has upped their capacity. It is just, I would just reiterate, care and consideration. These women have been through horrendous abuse. Their children have been torn from them and their lives were changed forever. So every act that you do, Minister, we must remember that. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Minister. No, absolutely, Senator. And I think you know, I acknowledged during the debates on the database legislation that I hadn't done enough to engage with survivors. Since then, I have engaged with a, a very significant. I've had about maybe 40 calls with survivors, individuals, groups, and it's given me a much greater perspective on on the, I suppose, the individual harm that was initially done in the mother and baby homes, and how the treatment by the state over the years has has um, magnified that harm. And I'm I'm very conscious of, of, of those issues, uh, and I'm very conscious of the, the need to bring forward that legislation. It's an absolute priority for me. As I said, we're meeting on it today. I'll be engaging in the first place with the Attorney General to talk about specifically and that idea of having it very much GDPR focused, that we can have that kind of as the linchpin around this piece of, particular piece of legislation and hopefully that can maybe avoid some of the difficulties that we faced and um, the kind of constitutional difficulties that we, we touched on during the last debates that have blocked progress on, on, on this matter before. But at all times I'll be working with uh, Senators across, uh, across across the, the door, because I think, uh, across the Senate and, and deputies across the door, because I think we all know we, we need to, to get this right, and I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to working with everybody to get a resolution for, uh, for the women and, the, and, and children who are in these homes, these institutions.